Sir Hattie Pina. So, sino ba to si Sir? So, he is an Asian Poker Tour Champion turned three times Philippine Stock Market Champion, including the first place in the first ever Investagrams Cup in 2017. Yun! Yun. So, which Bigani. is... Andun si ano? Si Boss si sumali dito. I think third si Boss, tapos first si ano? Si Sir. So, sir uh, Hattie. Ayun. So, he started his career in Call Financial Group Incorporated in 2010 where he built a discretionary fund from zero to almost half a billion Philippine peso that has since outperformed the P- Philippine Benchmark Index in seven of the eight years with one losing year. Grabe naman to si Sir. Grabe naman to si Sir. Seven out of eight? Isang, isang losing year lang, brat? Matanong natin ng mamaya anong mga ninjutsu ang ginamit ni Sir dito. So he has been He has been teaching classical technical analysis since 2014 for COL and he also he is also he also has been the main proponent for techniques and strategies for risk management and trading psychology for Kilum Trading Institute since 2013. So guys, help me welcome Sir Bigating. Ah, uh, teka lang. Have you Have you Yon. Hello. Hello Sir. Hello Sir. Hi guys. Yon. Ang why? Ang lamig ng boss si Sir. Narinig ko pa lang parang profitable na ako. <laughs> parang ako nga eh. Nakakahawa. Gagaling na ako mag-trade. Uh, so wala nang intro-intro, Sir Javi. First question. Nagmahal ka na ba? Game. Laban. <laughs> ano daw? Hello, Sir Javi. Anong, anong, anong tanong natin? Oh, first question. Hindi narinig ni Sir. Nag, nagmahal ka Sorry, na ba? Sorry, anong question yan? Nagmahal ka na ba? Ang tamang tanong siya, nasakta na ba ako? <laughs> Siyempre, nagmahal tayo. Oo uh, <laughs> nga, nagmahal na natin ba? <laughs> nagmahal at nasakta at nag-trade. Sir, sure, Javi, yun. Alam mo, trading question. Sir, <laughs> Javi, nung nagmahal ka ba, ano, trader ka na nun? Or, hindi pa? Or... Hindi pa, hindi pa, hindi pa. Ah, kaya pala. Hindi pa yata. Oh, hindi ba rin na mag-cut loss eh, kaya ano. Ah, hindi ba rin na mag-cut loss? Kaya nasaktan. So, so nung, nung natuto ka mag-cut loss, sir, so, nag-joke lang. Okay, ganun ba yun? Oo. Oh. <laughs> Naging easy na lang, brat. Naging easy. Oh. Madali na mag-cut loss eh. Right. So, sir, kumusta? Sir Javi. Uh, welcome okay, to naman. Boys Night Out. First time mo dito ang guest, no? It's very yes, sir. Special ka ngayon. Ang daming viewers natin ngayon, Thank 235. You. Before we start, sir, baka merong may gusto ka i-shoutout or greet dyan? Uh, mm. Sige, oh, So, marami akong nakitang sumali na kakalala ko. I'd like to shout out to Matt and Ken. So, mga teammates ko. So, these are guys that I manage money with on a day-to-day basis. Si Ken Arcano, si Anima. And si, you know, si Matt Flores, who's uh, si M.E. Flores. So, so, I'd also like to shout out to, sino ba? Yung ano, to the all call boys and call girls. Sa IFA family dito sa call financial. And of course, sa family ko sa Kalum, right? So, if may mga Kalum students, Kalum coaches listening out there, Um, welcome and uh, sana may may babahagi ako ngayon na may matutunan mga kayo. Alright. Right. So, o oh, yun. Alright. Cha- <laughs> Uy! Ano yun? <laughs> ano yun? <laughs> ano yun? Ano yun? Ano yun? Ano yun? May love song ah. <laughs> and uh, syempre sa Investagrams, no? So, alam ko na ikinig si na JC, si na Thomas. So, welcome. Si Sir JM, si JM na ikinig. Yun. So, sila Sir JC, yung maglase. Shoutout sa inyo, sir. Yes. Okay, shoutout, sir. JC, right. Investagrams team. Alright. So, Kuya Dave, start na natin ito. <coughs> Banatan oh, tara, tara. na, sir. Kuya Dave. Okay, sir Javi, una sa lahat. Ay, pangalawa pala. Pangalawa sa lahat. 
Pangalawa. Kamusta ba yung... Anong huli mong trade? Kung pwede ba namin... Anong huli kong trade? Ah. Ah, to sa sa personal or sa... Sa personal. Sa personal. Sa personal. Sa personal. Siguro G- GSMI? GSMI? Wow! 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 Classmate? Right, oh. Classmate, so... Yeah. So, yun yung maybe one of the latest trades na na-close ko. And then, um... Um... ISM! Yun! Sinara ko nung nalaglag. Yeah. Ay, nako! So, at least kumita pa... Kumita pa kahit konti. So... Ayaw. So, nalabas sa... sa Ay, sa ikaw bita. yung nambuhos doon. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> <Ay>, naman. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> naman. Tapik. Oo. Oh. So, Nasa... Sir, sa... Sorry, sorry. Sige, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Sige. So, sa mga nambuhosan, pasensya na. Ganun talaga. Trading. Oo, oh, kakalaban tayo lahat dyan, brad eh. Kakalaban tayo lahat eh. Walang kaibig-kaibigan dyan, brad. So, Sir Javi, oh. ano? Um, what is... Talong, talong lang namin, no? Um, ano yung sure. buhay mo? What, is, what was your life prior trading and what led you to trading? What must, what was my life prior, prior to trading? Yep. To trading and uh, what was my life? Well, uh, uh, what led you to trading? Mas, uh, girlfriends, ganyan. Mm, masaya, naman, masaya, masaya naman yung buhay ko before trading. <laughs> um... Actually, before trading, ano ba? So I actually had a different career. Um, I was a marketer, right? And um, so I I was three years out of out of college, and I had the good fortune of landing my my choice job at the time, which was to be a management trainee and then a a assistant marketing manager for a for a consumer goods company. So, kung kabisado nyo yung uh, Bear Brand, so, yun yung hinahanda natin. Gatas um, yan eh. I used to be... Oh, gatas, oh. Gatas yun, sir. Hindi, tsaka... Mahilig sa gatas to. Mahilig sa gatas to. Mahilig sa gatas to. Come right. to think of it. Come to think of it, yes. Come to think of it. <laughs> Right, so yung 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 I think I think my biggest my biggest project at the time was Lucky Sagatas. Kung di ko lang kung kabisado yung campaign eh. it was a it was a public ah. school advocacy campaign sa sa mga public schools. And then uh, what led me to trading? Kasi nung as a marketer, kasi if you look at the milk industry during that time yung biggest problem ng milk industry was half of the market that was supposed to be drinking milk wasn't drinking milk yeah. so yung biggest project was an advocacy na to push people about the importance of drinking milk so yun yung campaign ko and i remember what led me to trading was um throughout that whole year na ginagawa ko yung campaign kasi yung biggest project ko sabi ko Although very noble, very meaningful yung ginagawa ko, I would always um, feel na I would rather do this and work. Kasi at the time, kung magtrabaho ko nun, pasok ako ng 9, alis ako siguro mga 11 ng gabi, 12 midnight, 2 a.m. in the morning, ganyan. So long hours talaga. And sabi ko, I would rather do this na lang sa financial advocacy. Parang nandun talaga yung, yung, yung puso ko nung time na yun eh. So, I think that was what eventually led me to trading. Kasi even before I got into my marketing job, um, sinabihan ako ng HR na, Javi, maghintay ka muna kasi yung position na gusto mo, um, one, one year later pa mag-open eh. So, habang naghihintay ako for what I thought was my dream job, uh, nag-stocks muna ako. So, I actually, I, I took a real estate job eh, hindi ko naman alam pag nakabenta ka ng 5 million, 10 million condo, lahing commission, di ba? So, nung nakabenta ako ng condo, anong gagawin ko sa pera ko? So, nag-open ako ng brokerage account. So, that was 2007, January, or I think 4th quarter 2006 with Ang Ping Securities. So, with AP Securities. I remember during that time, nag-open ako ng account sa Ang Ping Securities. Nag-open din ako ng account sa HDI 
Securities 2009. So, naging broker ko nun, si Miko Sayo. So, he was actually in, in, in uh, HDI then. And then, um, my third brokerage account that I opened was Seawall Financial. And um, I remember when I... So while I was in my marketing job, little did I know that that bro- those brokerage accounts that were open would have been seeds that were, parang yun yun yung mag overtake sa sa passion ko kung baga. So yung nasa habang nagbebenta ako ng gata, sabi ko, I'd rather, <laughs> if kung kung magtatrabaho ko ng nine hanggang two twelve midnight, I'd rather hmm. do it in something that number one I love doing, and I'd rather do it. Not putting money in someone else's pocket, kasi empleyado. Yes, yes. So, so Sir Javi, pali. Yes. Sa, sa bear brand, pali Nestle, tama ba? Nestle? Yes, yes. So Nestle, oh, three oh, years, Nestle. three years yun. So yeah, nagbibit. So yun yung. So sa ngayon kasi, alam mo yung sa Milo, talaga ko yung yes. energy gap, energy, energy gap. Hindi ba kayo? Energy. <laughs> Ener- oh. Energy. Yung sa Milo, energy gap si James Reed, di ba? May ganon siyang Nano na ano ni. Oh, my God, yun eh, pero uh, so, oh. parang ganun, sir. Ganun ba? Nagmo-market kayo ng ganun. Yes, yeah, so, so may let's say sa let's say for example, may kwa may benta kami. I think Bear Brand sales at the time was mga 20, 25 billion. So, oh, laki. Pers- oh, malaki. Oh. Fourth largest Grand brand in the Philippines after after beer and then Um, 5% of that would be in marketing and then I think um, sa akin yung below the line na budget so yun yung ginawa ko uh, 500, 200-300 million in all below the line activities so yun, yun, yun yung ginawa ko dati Pag sabi may, may nakita ko sa Instagram mo eh yun ba yun? Sure yung, yung parang batang picture mo yun ba yun? Ko, Ibang, yun ko, ba yun? may kita mo dun tat 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 yung letrato dun eh <laughs> Hindi <laughs> nakita na ko yun sa Instagrams na ano eh. Uh, ano yun? Uh, inaanak ko yun. So, ko pala, kala ko ikaw yun. Ah, okay, okay. Ay, okay. Ay, okay. Ay, okay. Ay, kalaban ng Nestle si ano eh si Sir Thor bull brand daw yung title <laughs> ito nga bull brand ano yun bull brand bull brand bull brand bebenta yun bebenta yun gatas yung bear brand bearish eh no bearish oh. <laughs> o nga ano lagyan mo naman ng ding 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 para naman tayo corny brand <laughs> <laughs> bull brand. Parang lang may naisip ako yung maganda sa bull brand na tagline eh. Bull brand. Gagatasan natin ang market. Yun. Yeah. <laughs> so, Kaya pala yun yung sinusulat ko. Bear brand kasi. <laughs> okay. Dito na tayo sa ano no. Um, as when when you were for, uh, trading, ano daw yung yes. um, pinaka memorable trading error? na nagawa Trading mo as, as a newbie and as a uh-huh. professional fund manager or maybe you could share us the biggest loss or memorable experience mo na error when, okay. when you first starting and when you became a fund manager sure um, so siguro yung one of the so lahat ng pagkakamali ng lahat ng trader tingin ko tingin ko nagawa ako na ano. um, pero siguro yung When I would go back to when I started 2010, the first major mistake I ever made was oversizing. And um, I remember, kasi nung nag-start ako, funda-based yung, ano eh, yung pag, pag-manage ko ng pere. So it was mainly with a group that was fundamentals-based. And um, <clears throat> naalala ko nung puma- 2000, first pick namin was Meral. And uh, syempre, bago ka lang sa market, sabi sa'yo ng mga boss mo, Meralco, ito yung kwento. Tapos, naalala ko, 185 siya nun. So, sabi na, kaya yan mag-400 kasi may bidding war between, I think, MVP and the Lopez Group. So, nung mm-hmm. first month ko as a professional fund manager, I think, dalawa, isa, isa o dalawa pa lang kliyente ko nun, yung Meralco from December, 185. I think, a month later, nag-300. So, sabi ko, uy, Eh, during that time, one month, 
syempre, ano yun, if almost 50% up in your first month or in your first pick. Sabi ko, dali ang so, grabe, sobrang dali pa ng stock market. Easy. Yun ang kala ko. Oh, and, and then, so, 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 so yun yung, ed, down pa yung market nun habang umakit yung meral. So, di pa natapos dun. So, after yung meral ko, um, di benta na, di ba? Second pick namin was Nickel Asia. Kaka IPO lang ng Nickel Asia and I think that was February 2011. Nag IPO ng 15, 16, 17, somewhere there. And then one month nag 23, 24. So sabi ko, uy, grabe, Isa. sobrang ano ah, galing ah, parang two out of two na. So yung third pick namin, syempre medyo ano ko na eh medyo kampante ka na dun sa calls ng Genius ng ka, team mo oh, de, hindi ako yung nagko-call ang nagko-call yung dalawang heads namin during that time ah, okay. which was uh, from the base to oh. so syempre pero kampante ka na kasi pinapasok ang kliyente markets down pero yung dalawang picks mo up so yung third pick namin AGI diba so naalala namin AGI at that time was 11.30 10.8 somewhere there and then naglabas kami ng research ng kwento na kaya siya mag 18 pesos in 3 years. So sinulat yun ng mga boss namin. And then um and here's what happened no. So naalala ko that day sinabihan kami na bumalik kayo max 20% for the portfolio. So syempre kami kami mga people managing clients bibili na kami ng umaga. Half day pa yung market nito eh, half day pa. Tapos nung naglunch na kami di kain kami sa pantry, di ba? Nung nag-uusap kami, naalala ko, kinuusap ko, there was this one guy, si Chino, sabi ko sa kanya, oh no, natapos ka na ba sa AGI? Oh, oh dami ko ang binili. Sabi ko, so still, ko, ilan yung binili mo? Sabi niya, 30%. 30%? Ako rin eh. Tapos lahat kami, kumakain kami, mga apat, lima kami. Although sinabihan kami ng 15, 20% max, dahil lahat kami, 30%. Yung mga person namin, 50 pa rin ang ganyan namin, 50%. Uh, so, and the, the mistake was, kasi syempre pag galing kang streaks of wins, wins um, as, as I think most traders here already know, whether you go through a string of, of losses or a string of wins, it pushes you to an emotional extreme and it causes yeah. you to make mistakes, in this case, oversizing. Diba? Dama, so, dama. I think, I think some lose. traders would call that uh, Superman dama. syndrome. <laughs> so... <laughs> Le pare so yun 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 yung nangyari and and the reason why it was a mistake was because I think kung naalala niyo during that time um syempre kampante kami 30 50 40% yung linagay namin sa mga kliyente kasi galing kami ng ano eh Meralco Nickel Asia um ang nangyari was they announced I think a private placement at a discount so I think from from a from for a span of six months, or I think for the rest of the year, yung eleven thirty or eleven forty, bumaba yata yan sa seven eighty or eight pesos. And Grab. wala kami ano yun na, hindi kami walang cut cut yun na. In fact, <laughs> oh, we didn't dude. even oh, wala wala kami wala kami awareness of cutting losses. It was just. It was a very wow. different style. It was conviction type na mm-hmm. na na pag ito yung talagang tingin mo mangyayari, dapat ganito yung mangyayari. So it was a conviction call. And mm-hmm. um, I think over time so what happened was over time um, eventually kasi this was 2011, the market was sideways pagdating ng 2012, the bull market resumed its uptrend. And what happened was Siyempre, dahil dinaanan namin yun, I think for most listeners, kung dumaan kayo sa malaking loss, pag bumalik kayo sa break-even, sobrang sa'yo yun na. Gusto niyang lumabas eh. Di ba? So, ang nangyari sa amin was, although target namin 18, uh, ang nangyari was 12, 13, 14, 15. Nagbenta na kaming lahat eh. We were just so happy to get out. That doesn't even count yung mga clients na... Kasi ano, yun, yun, yun yung first time na naranasan ko na may mga clients na umalis sa serbisyo mo. Oh. And I think uh, that was uh, that was maybe one of the very first lessons that, that, that I had. That if you want your emotional stress in the market to jump to an exponential level, 
then work on cut losses. Diba? I think cutting losses, learning how to cut losses, solves 80-90% of the of the stress in my opinion. Eh. Kasi para mahirap kumawak sa malaking talo. Especially, especially pag hindi mo pera, mahirap talaga. Lalo na pag yung kliyente, kaka-retire lang, tapos sa'yo binigay yung retirement money. Mm-hmm. And then, alam mo yung medyo nahihiya pa, sabihin sa'yo na, alam mo, Javi, gato, plan namin mag ganyan. So, syempre, it, it was, it was a, it was a lesson, it was, it was a, it was a lesson learned. And, grasya na lang sa amin during that time na bull market. Kasi, syempre, a bull market over time corrects pretty much majority of the mistakes made. Eh. Right. Diba? So, yun nangyayari. So, that was the one of the first uh, uh, mistakes that I made. Definitely not the, definitely not the biggest. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yun. Um, uh, na-wipe ka na ba, sir? I mean, wipe out? Psychologically wipe or tsaka portfolio wipe? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Oo oh, naman. Oo oh, naman. Um, is it is died it? and born again yes many times <laughs> died, died and born again ikaw ba Arif na wife ka na ba na wife na wife brad na wife grabe grabe naman yung wife na. grabe naman yung wife brad pinapasag mo yung sarili mo eh hindi 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 mo na wife pero nanggaling din tayo sa ano sa malaking boss noong 2016 pero ano pa rin yung mga nagsistart tayo so hindi pa hindi pa ganun kalaki yung ano kinilala mo ko na part noon mm. mm. so follow up question lang sir Javi no sure um, since sabi mo kanina oversizing yung ano di ba yung right. one of the lessons that you had um, when you were first starting so one of the big mistakes yes big mistakes, kasi right. yes kasi In context, the three biggest mistakes that all traders make, at least what we teach in Kalum, is oversizing, um, overtrading, and not cutting losses. So those three, I think, are the are the stage four cancers that you want to avoid. Yeah. <coughs> so sir, eh, ngayon, um, since medyo matagal ka na sa ano sa market, so how did you scale up since yun nga, hindi ka pwedeng oversizing bawal. So, how do you scale up from from when, when you were growing your portfolio? Yung lumalaki na yung portfolio mo, paano mo handle yung ganun? So, how did I, so the question is, how did I scale my business or um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Sir, di ba yung port, portfolio nyo as the years go by right. habang lumalaki yung port nyo, no? right. so how yeah. did, how Of course, may mga challenges yon along the way yung malaking port. Kasi, for example, yung thousands port ko ngayon, uh, iba na yung problems ko pag millions na yung port ko, di ba? So, yung, yung scaling up na yun, sir, ano yung mga naging challenges nyo along the way? Right. So, um, obviously, the number one way to really grow your, to scale your port is is um, with performance, no? Um, As a marketing guy, as someone who was in marketing for three years, the fastest way to really bring down the business is to market a bad product, right? So, first of all, you really need to be in a position to to communicate, to market. And um, although during that time, nung nag-start ako, hindi um, ko naman alam na I did not have the same level of awareness na ito sa bull market eh. Pag bull market, lahat magaling eh, di ba? Um, lahat kala nila magaling sila. So, during that time, the number one <clears throat> way that I scaled it up was essentially through, ano, through making customers happy. That's one. I think it came to a point where 2016, at the 17 or at the height of the fund, um, 80% of pretty much all money or all clients were internally referred by an existing client. So it was really by existing clients that were seeing the returns and referring other clients. So that was really how I scaled. Um, what are the challenges in scaling the uh, fund that size? I would say that 
maybe the number one challenge that a lot of people don't realize is that the more and more clients that you manage, the more and more money that you manage, the more and more you expose yourself to the client's biases. Grabe. Uh, yeah. Pare, uh, um, I, 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 and, and, and I think and I think that's that's really the 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 main challenge not just for myself but a lot of other people who also manage money professionally not just in COL but I'm sure you guys have the same experience why kasi um kasi when you manage um paano ba? kasi when you manage client money Shepa, you talk to them every day. Not the one every day, but but you talk to them once in a while. I have clients who would like to call me maybe three, four times a week. We'd exchange ideas. Uh, and the reality kasi is, is that, and this is maybe what I've learned, uh, is that in the stock market, what's the percentage of people that lose money? It's around 85%. It's 85%. Not just here, that's the statistic around the world and that's the long-term statistic. Taas. Uh, taas, Pero, syempre, hindi naman ibig sabihin nun, 85% of the people, 85% of the people hold 85% of them. Hindi naman, it doesn't necessarily translate out. In fact, it's the opposite. Diba? 20% of the people hold 80% of them. And it's the 80% the other 80% that maybe lose money. So here's the thing. If you decide to, let's say, start managing clients, um, the more and more you expose yourself to the 80% eh, or to the to the to, oh no, to the crowd, to the consensus, to to other people's ideas on how the money should be deployed. Right? And and as most of you guys maybe already know. Um, at the peak of market cycles, that's when people are mostly optimistic. In fact, um, going back to one of the challenges of building a fund is that, ako, and no fail, uh, most of the referrals that I get from happy clients, uh, na happy management naman yung inaan ako, or ito yung kapatid ko, yung brother-in-law ko, may pera, ganyan. Lahat na ako sa to. I always get them I always get all my referrals at the top. Not among all, but majority. Right? And um, in the same way that you get most of the people na gustong kumalas or gustong, let's say, umalis sa service or let's say that are considering other alternatives like maybe bonds or a money market that's giving them 4, 5, 6%. You always have those challenges at the bottom. Why? Because... At the bottom is when you have peak pessimism, eh. and at the top is always when you have peak optimism. And maybe one of the challenges of of scaling a fund is you expose yourself to the emotional cycle from so long investing. And shepherd as fund managers, ang naging trabaho mo it's not just to manage the money; it's also to educate the people right it's to i mean it, it really becomes an education job at the end of the day you really have to lead and handhold and and just try to educate clients and and and